Hey everyone, it's Raiko here from Raiko Gaming. Welcome to the next episode of Learning to Play City Skylines. So today we're going to pretty much spend the whole episode on uh, one particular mod. So if you click the link to go to my mod collection, which is at the bottom of this video in the description section, you'll need to click the show more link to um, show the actual link to the mod collection and it should take you to City Skylines. Um, if you can't find a link to my mod collection, you can always search the mod on um, the Steam Workshop. So the one we're going to be using is called Traffic Manager President Edition. So scroll down to P, or search for it in the Steam Workshop. So T for Traffic Manager. So it's got TMPE, so Traffic Manager President Edition, version 11 stable. Um, and we want to add that so just click on the plus to add it to um, your game and again um, Steam will download it for you so it's created by this person crazy 1245 hopefully I've spelled that correctly thank you very much to this person because it really adds a huge amount to the game in terms of being able to manage your um, traffic in your city so um, it is really really useful so add that into your game and then we'll load up a city and we'll see uh, what um, we can do with the mod in our game let's just wait for the game to load um, so there's lots of different features that allow us to um, improve the base game mechanics of um, traffic flow and we can do lots of different things so it should have already automatically um, enabled it in the um, content manager and you'll see up the top you'll see um, the icon for traffic manager presentation if you just click on it you can drag it around and move it into a nicer position um, up to you and when you click on it and again it pops up a little window you can move that window around uh, but you'll notice that it's kind of transparent so um, I find that a little bit more difficult to read but it's kind of up to you so what we can do is we'll first look at the options for the mod and uh, look at what some other options do so let's go down to the settings um, cog wheel here so if you click on that and then go to options you will now see that we have options for traffic manager president edition all right um, so if you want to lock the main menu button position and lock the menu position so that's the drop down menu and the main menu button position you can do that or leave them free floating and allow you to move them around uh, this lets you scale the user interface to make it bigger or smaller you can see it happening in the background there um, so just do that however you want I'm going to put it at 100% so the window opacity is how transparent the window is um, for traffic manager that pops up so you can make it completely transparent uh, well not completely it's 10% transparent you can see you can hardly see it in the background there and if we make it completely opaque there's no transparency at all personally I like it completely opaque uh, but that's entirely up to you so change the window opacity to be whatever you want and then for the overlay transparency so these are the icons that will be overlaid when you're in the tool um, you can change the transparency of it um, by using that so again I like to keep mine completely opaque so it's not transparent at all so feel free to do that you can enable the tutorial message so currently it's been set because it's the first time you're using it so I recommend leave it set and you can turn that off later on in the settings uh, notify me if there's any unexpected mod conflict so you could turn that on if you think you might get any uh, conflicts later on I haven't had any so I don't think you really need to worry about it uh, leave the two these two default ones on scan for unknown com, incompatible mods and ignore disabled mods so we'll just leave those as they are display speed limits as miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour so if you're in North America and you have all your speed limits in miles per hour you can click this and it will then display everything in miles per hour uh, personally I'm in New Zealand so we have kilometers per hour so I'll leave that as that and if you do decide to use miles per hour you can change the theme to match either US or British or German signs if you want to but if it's kilometers per hour it only there's only one setting for that then we get to the simulation accuracy so um, how accurate the simulation is so we can have a look at what this is actually about if we go to the traffic manager wiki page um, and we can kind of learn a bit more about that so um, if you search for traffic manager president edition in Google then you'll come to this particular page here 
so let's go to the options um, and we want to go through the general tab and we go down to the simulation accuracy so when simulating vehicle behavior at junctions with priority signs or time traffic lights generally not all vehicles are considered during the calculations due to the desired limitation of required computing power selecting one of the provided accuracy levels lets you control how many computational resources are invested in calculating those type of junctions so basically if you've got a lot of cars waiting then when it does its calculations about how the junction works it doesn't take into account all the different cars around that particular junction and so the more accurate you make it the more cars it takes into account when it makes um, decisions about the junction um, only thing is the more accurate you make the simulation the more computing resources are going to be used for that so it can slow your game down so you kind of want to play around and if you find it slow if things are slowing down too much you could try changing that so if you've got um, a reasonable pc but it's not a gaming pc then you might want to keep it at the lowest setting if you have a reasonable pc um, gaming wise then maybe medium but if you've got a very high powered gaming pc then you could put it all the way up so um, it shouldn't really affect things too much but um, it's up to you so let's go back to the game so you see you've got very low low medium high uh, medium high and very high so I'm going to stick it on high and we'll see how that goes um, the apply AI changes right away right away so what let's go back to the wiki page and have a look at what that means um, oh where's that gone it's not there it's, okay that's interesting so that doesn't seem to be um, explain so what that does is when you make changes to, when you, you impl when you use the um, traffic manager tool in the game then any changes you make using traffic manager they're applied right away um, to all the cars that are around it if you don't have that ticked then um, some, some ca the cars that are close to whatever it is that you're doing will carry on the way they were doing before and then the further back cars will then take into account those changes you've made okay so that's what that so I would leave it on uh, it's kind of up to you all right so those are all the settings for the general um, mod for the gen general part of the mod so let's go to the gameplay um, setting so we're going to look at what vehicle behavior is so again let's go back to the wiki and learn about the vehicle behavior uh, so reckless sims some sims do not like sticking to the rules reckless driving introduces multiple kinds of traffic rule violations so what that means is that um, at zero percent reckless driving everyone will obey the rules no matter what cool um, if we go back to the game and have a look at what some of the other settings are so you got minor complaints so two percent of people won't follow the rules in certain situations rush hour five percent and path of evil ten percent so it depends on how much of a challenge you want for your game right so um, ten percent reckless behavior you'll get quite a lot of cars doing weird things and clock and might cause you problems traffic wise so let's leave it at holy city you can play around that setting later on if you really want to cool the next one is the individual driving styles option so what is that about so I believe it's probably this one here so it's just been renamed so if this option is enabled actual speed varies from car to car in the base game vehicles always drive as fast as speed limits road condition and the car itself will allow okay so basically if you put individual driving styles on then it means that um, people drive at different speeds to kind of randomize things if we don't have that on everyone drives at the full speed of the speed limit of the road so up to you again I'm going to turn it off that's fine disable despawning I'll talk a bit more about despawning later on so we'll just leave that as it is enhanced vehicle AI so let's have a look at the description for enhanced vehicle AI all right so traffic manager present edition is equipped with a modified pathfinding algorithm the advanced vehicle AI improves the overall traffic in multiple aspects vehicles choose their routes based on the current traffic situation overall lane usage is improved so what we mean by pathfinding algorithm is when a car needs to go from one place in your city to another place it uses an algorithm to work out the best path 
to get through your city using your roads to get to there so the game has a base algorithm that it uses so traffic manager present edition has a, its own version of the AI that can be that can supersede the base version and it allows things like what's the current situ traffic situation are there roads being clogged up then maybe the car will use a different route to not get clogged up as well um, and it will open uh, overall lane usage is also improved so this is probably a good thing to use although remember it will also um, use up uh, your CPU resources because more calculations are actually being done okay so I will actually turn that on to enable advanced vehicle AI because I think the traffic manager one is better than the one that's in the game and then dynamic lane selection um, Uh, that one's not described for some reason it must be added into the mod before um, here yeah. so what that should do is um, allow your citizens oh, here we go so it's the percentage of vehicles performing dynamic lane selection so, um, so at the moment it's set to zero so dynamic lane selection uh, I assume is when vehicles decide to choose uh, which lanes they want to go into again if you put up to 100 it's going to use more resources um, put it to 50 kind of half and half so maybe we'll put it at 50 we, you could always play with that later on if you want to parking AI enable more realistic parking so let's have a read of what that is about so you may have noticed that sims sometimes spawn a car at the current position or create a car that's what spawn means or that cars suddenly disappear especially noticeable at public transport stations this behavior or misbehavior is also known as using pocket cars so basically the sims carry a car around in their pocket <laughs> so it's not very realistic right but this is a game so even though we try and make the game realistic sometimes you can't do that the reason is that sims do not care much about parking spaces if a free parking space lies in the in the close vicinity where the sims need to get rid of their car everything is fine but the base game does not come anywhere near real life behavior when talking about parking and returning to using a parked vehicle this is the point where the parking ai comes into play so basically if the sim travels um, into the city if it can find a car park close to where it needs to go then um, they'll park their car if there's no parking around where, where they need to go they'll hop out of the car and then stick their car in their pocket when they want to go out of the building and go back home say then <coughs> if they haven't car parked their car before they pull their car out of their pocket put it on the road jump in and then start driving <coughs> um, if their car was parked beforehand they'll walk to their car and then jump in and then start driving where they want to go <coughs> cool so um, instead of having a ready to use car in their pockets after enabling the checkbox enable more realistic parking sims ordinarily try to park their car before reaching their target up to 10 times then they give up if sims decide to use their car to go somewhere they'll also first walk to their parked car and that's kind of what they said before so basically if you do enable more realistic parking uh, now yeah so if you do do that it means that you need parking spaces where the sims need to go because if there isn't then they won't actually be able to park somewhere and they might just go back home again and not go to work which is not so good um, so at this stage I think oh, we should leave that off um, and just allow them to have pocket cars and then later on once you're more experienced you could always turn that back on cool and the next one is prevent unnecessary transfers at public transport stations so let's have a read of that so when enabled additional pathfinding costs are applied so basically using more computing resources whenever a sim switches from one to another public transport line costs depend on the time the sims are expected to wait for the next public transport vehicle to arrive uh, and then there's a bit of jargon there so basically it reduces um, it makes it more e easier for the sims to get where they want to go using the public transport system but it does um, basically mean it will use more computing resources so if you don't have a fairly powerful computer you would probably leave that off if you have got a powerful computer then you could turn it on so I'm going to turn it on um, and we'll leave it at that 
Okay, so that's the gameplay um, options and what they do. Let's go to policies. So at junctions, Bussin may, may ignore lane arrows. So basically, you'll have set up some lane arrows. Maybe you've got a, a right-only turn arrow, but a bus is pulling out of a bus stop and it's close to an intersection. It means that if they still want to go straight, they can still use the, le the left turning lane and then keep going straight from there if they wanted to. Um, so it just means that they don't have to go f um, through unnecessary um, junctions and so on to get where they need to go. So that's normally a good thing to turn on. Vehicles may enter block junctions. We don't want to do that because if a junction is blocked, we don't want to add more vehicles to the block junction. So don't turn that on. Okay, that's not a good thing to do. Vehicles may do U-turns at junctions. That's probably not a good thing to do either because that can clog up junctions pretty quickly if too many things like that are happening. Don't turn that on. They can just find an, another place where they can turn using a normal road um, and get to where they want to go. Vehicles may turn at red traffic lights. So basically, if you're at a traffic light, and so I'm doing left-hand drive because I'm in New Zealand. So if you're at a traffic light and we want to turn left, generally in New Zealand we have what's called a free turn or a give way or a yield sign. So basically you can turn to the left even if, uh, even if the straight traffic has a green light um, going the other way um, because you would actually give way or yield to um, traffic that's already coming. So that's a good thing to do. So basically if you're either turning left if you're on a left hand drive system or turning right if you're a right hand drive system it allows those vehicles to turn and they will give way or yield to the oncoming traffic. Also apply to your left and right turns between one way streets. So if you've got one way streets then obviously um, that would be okay too. So I'll turn that on but it's up to you if you want to do that. Vehicles going straight on may change lanes at junctions. So do we allow vehicles um, to change lane at junctions? I don't think that's a good idea. I think they should change lanes after they've gone through the junction, just in case it might cause any traffic problems and so on. So I would leave that off, but that's again, it's up to you. Vehicles f follow priority rules at junctions with time traffic lights. Um, I don't think you need to do that. If it's a time traffic light, then obviously they should follow the rules of the traffic light. And then automatically add traffic lights if applicable. Actually, we don't want to do that because generally we want to have the least amount of traffic lights um, that we need and we can add traffic lights when we want to. So I would turn that off. Okay, on roads, vehicle restrictions aggression. Um, so let's have a read of what that is about. So policies and restrictions. This option controls how vehicle restrictions set by the player should be interpreted by TMPE. Further reading. Is there any further reading on that? Uh, I think it's basically about controlling the strength of enforcement. Um, so again, basically, if the, the more, so it goes low, medium, high, strict, the more strict or higher it is, the more computing resources, resources it will actually use um, to deal with um, the effects of vehicle restrictions. So restrictions are like banning um, trucks on a certain part of the road, um, that kind of thing. So if we go back to the game, so I would probably just leave that on normal. Um, uh, that's fine. You can play around with that later on if you want to. Ban private cars and trucks on bus lanes. That's probably a good thing. If you have bus lanes, then it should only be for buses, right? Shouldn't have private cars or trucks on bus lanes. Uh, we don't have any bus lanes in our city as yet, um, but we'll turn it on anyway. Enable highway specific lane merging and splitting rules. So this is an interesting one. So let's have a look at what this one is about. Uh, let's go back. So when exiting, entering a highway, vehicles switch to or come from a designated lane in real life. These are called a so-called deceleration acceleration lanes in order to maintain a steady flow of traffic on the highway and to ensure safety. In real life, there are rules how highway lanes are merged or splitted. TMP implements these rules for all highway roads and restricts the set of allowed lane changes on highways if you enable this. So let's go to the further reading to find out what this will actually do. So in reality, you may notice cars only very rarely change multiple lanes at once on highways 
while multi-lane changes may happen quite frequently in city skylines depending on the layout of your network all right so what we're saying is that um, imagine that cars are traveling from the top here and they want to get off onto this um, off ramp or deceleration lane if we're in this lane here then what cars will do is they'll just cut all the way across straight from that outside lane and they'll cut all the way across all right um, whereas that's not a good thing to do because if there's traffic which is going straight they're going to kind of impede each other uh, which is not what we want when exiting when exiting entering a highway vehicles gradually switch to or come from a designated lane in real life whereas in-game vehicles arrive from a feeder road and often cross across multiple lanes at once so we did that one so the other one is when we're coming on so this vehicle coming from this um, on-ramp here or acceleration lane come in and instead of carrying on in the lower one here they'll just cut all the way across and get into this outer lane over here and then again you're impeding the traffic over here so in the real world almost every highway entry exit is equipped with so-called lanes so we know that um, they are needed in order to maintain a steady flow so vehicles enter the highway and reach at the target speed um, blah 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 and while high rules are activated lane changes must be performed incrementally that means one by one except emergency vehicles um, for that so what that means is that if we're coming in vehicles can only change one lane at one time so that means before they get to this junction um, the cars need to be in the correct lane beforehand rather than cutting across same with the on-ramp comes on it goes into this lane over here then they can change into this, this lane a bit further on then they can change into this lane a bit further on so it means it just um, spreads out the traffic flow and makes things flow a lot nicer so this is definitely one that you want to implement all right so let's do that heavy vehicles prefer outside lanes on highways that's a good one so basically all your trucks um, instead of carrying on the so if it's left hand if we're doing left hand drive instead of being on the left hand side which is where all the, the off ramps come off we want the lanes to be on the outside okay so um, we want that thing on roundabouts pedestrians should not cross to the center of the roundabout so that's a probably a good thing pedestrians should not cross the roads approaching the roundabout so any roads coming up to the roundabout would not you if you take that pedestrians can't cross um, be just before the roundabout so that means because if pedestrians are crossing just before a roundabout it slows all your traffic coming on to the roundabout so I wouldn't turn that on what we'll do is we'll, we'll build pedestrian bridges to allow pedestrians to get across roundabouts stay in the lane inside the roundabout yep that's probably a good thing stay in lane on the roads approaching the roundabout that's a good thing allocate dedicated exit lanes um, so yeah one dedicated lane for each exit the rest of the lanes will keep going straight around the roundabout so that's a good idea uh, we can override some of these things manually in traffic manager as well add priority signs on the roundabout junction so yes we want to do that so what that does the pop-up comes up Oh, there's no pop-up for that uh, oh, did it come up no so basically that just puts your um, yield and stop signs um, on the roundabout junction yielding vehicles keep clear of blocked of a blocked roundabout yes we want that we don't want things to block up even more so we want that assign realistic speed limits to roundabouts um, so generally roundabouts in real life have a speed limit so that you don't get um, crashes and things like that but because this is a game um, you don't need to worry about that cars will go around a roundabout quite happily at the speed limit so it's up to you to turn that on or off I'm just gonna leave it off put a parking parking ban inside a roundabout yeah we don't want any cars parked on the inside of a roundabout and we put parking bans on roundabout branches uh, that's up to you if you want to put the roads coming onto the roundabout having parking bans on that priority roads allow pedestrian crossings on a main road so this is like our arterial roads and collector roads so yes we still want people to be able to cross that's fine allow cars to take far turn from into the main road not recommended so we're not going to do that allow cars to yield road allow cars on yield road to enter blocked main road no nope, we don't want to do that because we don't want cars to make further blockages use stop signs when entering a main road no nope, we don't want to do that as well because we're going to put our own yield 
and um, or giveaway symbols in. All right, so those are all the policies and what they um, are about. Again, you can go to the Traffic Manager Wiki and you can get all the extra information about that. Then you have overlay. So if you tick these, this will show up every time. Um, so we'll leave them off for now. There's a thing on maintenance. Don't need to do anything about that. And you can set some key binds if you want to bring up the different tools that you want to. All right, so those are all the different options in Traffic Manager Precedent Edition. I need a little bit of water, and then we'll look at how to use the tool in the game. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is the despawning. So currently, you'll see that this icon here, which is the despawning button, has been selected, which means that despawning is enabled. So what is despawning? So basically, if you had a mass massive traffic jam and none of the cars were moving for ages, what happens is the game goes, oh, I can see that there's a massive traffic jam here, nothing's been moving for a long time, and it will just despawn or delete some waiting cars uh, so that will then free up the junction and cars can then start to move again because they've been deleted so that's the easy mode because the game will um, delete cars automatically for you um, it still doesn't stop all um, traffic jams to occur because it starts despawning after some time has finished so um, in traffic manager so the default game it currently sets it on for those of you that like a challenge, we can actually turn that off, and that basically means that if you get a traffic jam, the game's not going to do anything about it, it's going to leave it up to you to somehow fix it. So we can tick, untick that, so unselect that, and now you can see it says no despawning, hard mode, bigger traffic jams. And that just adds a bit of a challenge to the game, a bit more of a challenge, and it makes it more fun personally, because I think dealing with the traffic is one of, well, it can be one of the most frustrating. And one of the most very rewarding things in the game is when you get your traffic um, going really smoothly. Okay, we'll just speed the, tra the game up a bit. Um, the other one is the clear traffic button. So what that will do is it'll clear all the cars off your road. So we probably don't want to do that. But if you get a massive traffic jam, you just can't get everything, um, can't get rid of them all. We can just clear the traffic. And one thing you can do, if I just pause the game, if you select a vehicle, uh, I need to get out of Traffic Manager. If we select a vehicle, you can actually delete an individual vehicle as well by clicking the Remove This Vehicle button. So if you've got a little bit of a jam here, you got some car stuck in the middle, you can just select each one. So let's say that this car is stuck, is causing a traffic jam. We can just select it, delete it, and then um, the rest of the cars will then start moving again. So you can delete individual cars as well. Whereas this button, will delete all cars, which is not what we want. Okay, so let's have a look at um, the lane selector tool. So this is the lane arrows tool, and it allows us to now um, be able to control um, our lane arrows so that we can have dedicated lanes for going um, to turning left and going straight and so on. Okay, so if we choose this tool here, and then you click on this part of the road, that brings this up, so you've got lane 1, so that's this uh, leftmost lane here. You see it's got um, turning left and going straight has been selected, which is the default thing in the game. If we select that, you can see now it changes it so that only straight traffic will use the middle one, um, because the, the left one now only has that. So if we put all of them on, you can see you can go all directions, which is not what we want. So we just want left only, this is straight, this is straight. So we would just want to keep that. Sweet, and we want to do the same thing on the other side. So just select that. We only want a right turn here, so that keeps that dedicated for right turn only. And then we've got two lanes for people that are going straight. So that um, means that it, you won't get as much, back, as much backed up traffic. Sweet. So this is only useful when you've got um, roads that have um, at least more than two lanes, right? If you've got a road, uh, two lanes each way. So if you've got a road, just two lanes only, one going one way, one going the other way, it doesn't really help, right? Because there's only one, one lane you can actually use. Again, if we look down here, we can see that this middle lane is doing three things, left, straight, and right. And so the AI will tend to use that when it doesn't need to. OK, 
Okay, so you can see that blue truck just went across, turned right there. Whereas some trucks are going straight on, some are turning left. So you see that one's turning left. So we don't want that. So we want to turn that one to be straight only, because we've already got a left turn and a right turn. Again, over here, we want some dedicated lanes. And then over here, we want some dedicated lanes as well. All right, so we could do each one individually, but luckily for us, um, we can, if we click the lane arrows tool, we can use control click to do turning lanes for the entire junction. So if you hold the control button down on your keyboard, when you click, um, then look what happens. You can see that it tries to match its best guess as, what, as to what you want to do. If you click again, it flips them around the other way. Does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, so it just does the best guess. And if it's not what you want, then you can change each one individually. So this is what we want. We want a dedicated lane for turning right, because turning right is often takes longer than turning left to going straight. So having a dedicated lane, so having a lane for going left and straight is perfectly fine. And you can see that we have the same thing on this side. So that's really easy. We just do a control click and it does it, right? Do a control click here and that fixes that up. So it's just a dedicated lane for left, one for straight. A dedicated lane for turning right, one for straight. And so we can just get control click, control click, nice and easy, and it fixes all of those up. So these are just um, just a two lane road only, so there's nothing we need to do for that. So it's basically only roads which have more than two lanes each way. Uh, so we got up to here, so there's one here, so control click, control click, control click, control click, control click. Sweet, so you can see all of that is working. Okay, so that's how we use the lane arrows tool, and it means that we can then set it up. So you want to use Traffic Manager Present Edition as soon as you start creating your city, and you start getting not dirt roads, but you start putting in roads which are collector and arterial roads. So that way, you don't want to start using it when you've done your city and you start getting massive traffic jams, because it's too late then, and it's really hard to go for your whole city. So you just want to do bits by bits. So as you build up part of your road network, use traffic manager to put in your lane arrows and other things as required. So I'll go through and um, do all the um, lane arrows later on um, after the video has finished. Cool, then we have the parking restrictions tool. Okay, so it says um, click on the P icons. If you shift, if you hold the shift key down, then it applies to multiple road segments. So let's say that um, where's the road with some parking on it okay so you can see that this this lane here um, has a road oh so these P's are very hard to see I wonder if that's the opacity let me just double check uh, hey, that's at the high setting oh well um, so you can just slightly see so at the moment um, parking is allowed if you click on that you can see that parking is disabled and the cars get shifted off so that red car that was here just got shifted into the farm here so again we can go um, P and P so that means there's no parking on here anymore so they'll, they'll the cars will be moved to a different location again you can undo them and eventually you'll get cars parking there so again on this road here you can see there's two sections of road so if you hold the shift key down it'll do that whole section as far as it can as far as you can okay so as far as it can go so again if we do this one uh, if i hold the shift key down no for this one it won't let us do that no for some reason that that one is only one se segment could be the way it's been designed Oh, it's probably because there's intersections, so it's only between intersections. So if we were to do this one, go back to our parking tool. Oh, that one doesn't have any parking on it anyway. This one? No, nope, that one doesn't have any parking on it either. Uh, this one here, here we go. So this one here, you can see it lines up all the way across to the next intersection. All right, so that's how you can ban parking. So it depends what you want. So some streets you might want, not want to have any parking. 
so that's how you can ban parking on those particular stretches of road this one here is to apply the vehicle restrictions so if you click on the road segment then we can toggle the vehicle restrictions if we hold the shift key down we can do multiple segments at a time all right so let's say this road here if we hold the shift key down Uh, just move, oh, there we go. Let's just move that down. Um, so it brings up the restrictions. We can allow all vehicles. We can ban all vehicles from that road, and we can apply vehicle restrictions to the entire road. Okay, so let's choose apply vehicle restrictions to the entire road. So now you can see that the whole road has been selected, um, and so you can now. So at the moment, remember I clicked the ban uh, all vehicles. So if we allow all vehicles, so it changes. So allow all vehicles. Right, so this applies for this whole segment here. So at the moment we can have cars, we can have buses, we can have, what are those? There might be emergency vehicles, we can have trucks, we can have rubbish, so that's emergency, maybe that's taxis and things. We can have trucks and we can have our uh, rubbish trucks. So let's say we want to ban all trucks um, for this road. So if we click on that, that bans all trucks for this whole segment. And again, that's on that side. So we want to do the same thing on this side. And now we can ban trucks. If we want to ban buses, we can do that as well. So that's how you can, how you can control certain roads and ban only the vehicles that you want um, for those particular streets. Otherwise, generally, we would just allow all vehicles along all roads. So sometimes it's really good. So if I put ban trucks here, here, and here, trucks can't get into this part of the city, right? Um, they'd have to go all the way around. Actually, no. Yeah, they have to go all the way around, up this way, and then come into here, right? So eventually they'll find a way, but um, it allows you more flexibility as to what roads you can actually have. All right, so that's vehicle restrictions. Next thing is speed limits. So if we go to that, so these are in miles per hour. Uh, we want control. Oh no, it is kilometers per hour. It's just got MPH here, but it's just telling us that 10 kilometers per hour is six miles per hour. Okay, so um, that's how you can do it. So again, if we hold the shift key, key down, we can apply it to the whole um, street. So at the moment, you can see this is set to 40. Okay. Um, if we wanted to, I can make it equal, set it to 80. So hold the shift key down, and that whole street will now allow 80 kilometers. So remember, as the Sims travel, they will choose. See that truck chose this line here. They will choose streets which have a higher speed limit because it's faster for them to get around. Okay. So emergency vehicles won't follow the speed limits um, so let's put that back down to 40 kilometers per hour because that's a realistic street all right so that's how you can control it so you, if you've got a, um, a collector road here but you just want to make it a bit faster maybe 60 kilometers per hour then we can easily do that using the um, speed limit thing again if we look at our roundabouts remember I used the highway road for that so it's got a um, speed of 100 around the roundabout so we could just make it a bit more realistic and let's say the speed must be 60 hold the shift key down and it does it for all segments of road on that particular roundabout so now that whole roundabout is 60 kilometers per hour we can also do this roundabout down here 60 kilometers per hour sweet so that's how we use the um, the speed limits um, button uh, so let's we'll come back to the junction restrictions. Let's have a look at the priority signs. So this allows you to put in um, your yield and um, stop signs and that kind of stuff. So let's take this junction here. Okay, this is a, a kind of a main collector road. So basically, I want this road going along all the way down here to be a priority road so that all of these cars going straight down this road have the right of way all of the cars coming onto the collector road um, should give way or yield right so if, so if we click on this um, junction here and then zoom in uh, yeah, so we'll just delete it so at the moment you see there's four empty circles because um, there's no yield or stop signs so if I click on that 
So this is the um, right of way um, option. So that says that traffic going in this direction have the right of way. They don't yield. If I use this symbol, this is the yield or give way symbol. And so now traffic coming this way, traffic coming this way must yield or give way to traffic going in this direction. Cool. And then if you want to actually make it a stop symbol, you can do that. So now um, it's an actual stop. They have to stop before they can carry on. Now, normally I don't use stop signs because we want to use the yield or give way sign so that if there's no traffic coming, they don't stop. They'll just keep going. All right. So what we want to do is make this whole road the same thing. Priority, right? So if you select the shift button, um, so just zoom out as far as you can go because you want to see how far it goes. So it actually goes a bit further than what we want. I don't want to do um, this road here. Just going along here. And I don't really want that one. But um, that means I'm going to have to do each one separately. Okay. Um, which is fine. Uh, we can do that. I'll do that later on. But what I want to do is make this road here. Actually, we'll take this as an example. So this road here, all the way along, should be the same, right? Because it goes, it's a collector road, it goes all the way around there, up to there. So that's a nice big long road. So that should be um, be given priority against traffic coming into it from either direction. So we hold the shift key down, uh, hold the shift key down, and then, so while we're holding it down, we can make sure that things are set correctly. And if we do that, we can see that all of these ones are now set correctly as well. All right? So they're all set correctly all the way across. Uh, you can see even down here, they've been set up correctly as well. So we can see that that is working really well. Awesome. Cool. So that's how we set up our yield stop symbols and right of way symbols. So you really want to do that for most of your junctions. Probably just junctions where local roads meet a collector road and collector road meets arterial um, roads. For for local roads which just intersect with local roads, because you can see the traffic is very low, we don't really want to have to do that. Okay. So again, here's a collector road. So we really want to set up set up this road here, right? So if you shift and go click, it sets it up for you automatically, all right? And you can just change individual things as required, and you can click the rubbish bin to delete one if you want to. Cool, and we want to do the same thing for our roundabout. So at the moment in the roundabout, there's no yield um, or give way for traffic coming onto the roundabout, which means they'll just interfere with traffic already on the roundabout, which is not what we want. So if you go, if you hold down control, um, it will quickly set up that entire roundabout for you. So if you hold down control, it'll do that one intersection. If we go control shift, um, it'll do that whole roundabout for us. So you go control shift, click, and you can see it now sets up the, uh, so you can see the traffic coming onto has a yield. Traffic on the roundabout has the right of way, which is exactly what we want. Sweet. And the other thing we want to do is make sure that traffic doesn't carry on if the uh, roundabout is blocked. So if we go back to, which tool is it? So this one here, we haven't done this one yet, so junction restrictions. So if you click on that, and then click on our junction here, let's have a look at what the various symbols mean. So this symbol means there's no crossings. So basically pedestrians can't cross if you untick it. It allows pedestrians to cross, but we don't want them to cross on a roundabout. This symbol here means that um, they can't switch lanes when they get to this particular junction. So the, the cars have to switch lanes somewhere beforehand. If you allow this one, they, as they come onto the roundabout, they can decide which lane they want to go onto. All right, so. Um, generally, I don't do that because I want them to choose the lane that they should get into before they get to this junction because there's three lanes coming into the roundabout. This lane here says um, no U-turns, which is good. We don't want to do that. 
This one here says there's a crossing at the entrance to that roundabout. We don't want that because that will, as people cross, it'll cause your traffic to slow down, which is not what we want. And this one is the, um, allows the uh, traffic to go into the blocked lane, right? So entering the block junk, entering a block junction. So if you put it on, it will allow traffic to go onto the junction, even if it's blocked. Don't do that because that causes even more headaches. So that should always be off when you're coming onto a roundabout. Right, so we can just double check each one. So you can see that this one, um, that has a, that should be turned off. Uh, we don't want crossings. Let's go to the next one, which comes on, which is this one here. So don't want crossings there. All of that is fine. Cool. And then this one here. We don't want crossings. Um, well, there's only one lane here, so it doesn't really matter, right? They're going to they're going to have to choose. So we'll leave that on because there's only one lane. So we want to do that. And then this one here. That one's fine. Now the other thing is, uh, so if we go back to this one here. So this is allow it to enter a junction for the traffic coming this way. This one here refers to the traffic on the roundabout. So on the roundabout, if you cross this it means that traffic will stop here sometimes which is not what you want you want the traffic on the roundabout to keep flowing so on the roundabout all this button should always be not crossed it should be green right so on the roundabout it should always allow traffic to carry on through that junction so that's on that's on that's on so this is why you want to do it as you're building your city because it causes a lot of problems um, later on. Whoa, you can see we've got a massive traffic jam coming up to here, now that we've added um, the extra thing in here. So you can see they're stopping, but there's not a huge amount of traffic going through here. So sometimes to alleviate that traffic, what we can do is I say, well, we don't want to allow traffic to enter the junction, but if there's not much traffic, maybe we do want to allow it for that particular one. And then as they start to come in, that just speeds that particular one up a little bit. And you can always turn it off again later on if it's causing more traffic to appear on the roundabout itself. Okay, So you can see that traffic is actually starting to go down quite quickly now. Alright, so things you do can have quite profound changes. Alright, so generally the junction restrictions you really want to do at interchanges and roundabouts because that's where um, most of your traffic will actually occur. Sweet, so we've done that, so we've done priority symbols, we've done junction restrictions, we've done that, we've done all of those. Um, so the last thing is uh, we can toggle traffic lights. If you click that button, you can go through and um, toggle any traffic lights. You can see at each intersection, there's a little traffic light icon. At the moment, it's not on, if we put that on, you can see that got colored lights now so that now it's controlled by traffic lights but it just slows everything down so we don't want that so basically you can go through your city and turn off all the traffic lights an easier way actually because it's very it's a little bit hard to see an easier way is if you go to traffic routes then go to junctions then it's much easier for you to see all your traffic lights because i'll actually turn up colored and you can just turn them off by clicking on them so that's an easier way to do it Alright, so sometimes, even though you might have a roundabout um, or you've got a junction which is really busy but you don't have any room to place a roundabout, then a timed traffic light is actually really cool because you can, you can specify the amount of time that each um, side of the junction will spend doing its particular part. So the easiest way is to set up a timed traffic light automatically for you, so you let the traffic manager do it for you and then you can change the timings of it. So let's use this junction here as an example. So go time traffic light. So it says that click on a junction. So use control click to quickly set up a default time traffic light. So it's actually quite difficult to set up manually. So I recommend you always do the, the default one. So go control click and it puts a timed traffic light in for you. Uh, that overlay is annoying. Can I just change the opacity? I thought I had done that. Let's do that. What does that do? Uh, didn't do anything, did it? No, 
No, I don't know. That didn't seem to do anything. Okay, so um, so if we have a look at the actual intersection intersection here, so in the um, pop up, the green one is the lane that's currently allowing traffic through. So you can see that step two is the ones coming down this way. Step three is left to right. Step four is down to up. And then step one is right to left. So it allows all of those um, intersections to go. Right, so we can actually set the timings. At the moment, it's got a minimum of three seconds, so three dot dot eight. It's got a minimum of three seconds, and there's a maximum of eight seconds that the light will stay green for. Okay. So what we can do is we can edit that, but we need to stop the traffic light working first. It might cause a bit of traffic to jam up um, as we're doing this. So let's say that um, left to right and right to left is actually most of the traffic. So we want to allow for more time. Okay. So, so at the moment, state one is highlighted. So that's um, the left to right. Okay, so actually we'll just double check that we'll just go start. So three is left to right. Yeah, so one is right to left and three is left to right. So we go stop. So let's change number one. So if you click on edit, you can then change the minimum time. Ah, oh, that opacity is really annoying. So the minimum time is three seconds. So maybe let's say it has to be a minimum of five and a maximum of 10. Don't worry about this stuff. That's pretty um, advanced stuff. So we don't want to mess around with that. Click save and you can see it, we've now got five dot dot 10 and we're going to do the same thing for step three. So go edit. So a minimum of five and a maximum of 10. Click save. Cool, click start and now it will start up. So now steps one and three will stay um, on for longer. All right, so that basically it will, if you've got a junction that you just can't fix, it's still got a huge amount of traffic, then um, if you can't fit a roundabout in or the roundabout doesn't work, then you can use a timed traffic light and that will generally um, allow you to modify the waiting times for each part of the intersection or the junction and because each part of the junction will get some seconds to actually work um, that will improve the flow a little bit as well so I don't tend to use the time traffic light a lot um, but it can be really useful in certain situations so um, that's how you use the timed traffic light Okay, so I'm going to stop it and delete it because I don't want one there. So uh, remove time traffic light so that gets rid of it. And what I'll do is I'll just put um, yield and um, right of way signs there instead um, later on once I finish this particular recording. Okay, so that's the time traffic light. And there's only one, uh, so there's one which is a manual traffic light where you actually control the lights yourself manually. Not really useful because you don't want to sit there manually controlling that traffic light for the rest of the game. So I don't bother using that one. So the last one is the lane connectors. So the lane connectors are really useful when you're doing connections onto a highway. All right, and also for particular junctions as well. So let's say that for this junction here, right, I've got um, two lanes going to the left and I've got three lanes going up and down here. So let's say I want two lanes to go into turning left, the middle one still to allow for straight, and this right lane here only for turning towards the right. So we could do it with the lane arrows, but we can also do it using the lane connector, and it, it can provide a bit more flexibility sometimes than what the lane arrows provide. Of course, you can do things uh, like this. So if we choose this one here, click, and then it pulls the lane arrow out, click again to connect to that, and so now that is only going to the left. What we could do, so this is what the lane arrows will allow you to do with that the, um, this is what the lane connector will allow you to do that the lane arrows won't allow you to do. We can do that. So basically from this left lane, 
the cast can go into either one of these two lanes here okay this one we just want to go so let's say for that one we want them to allow to go to any of these three sweet and for this one we want them we want to allow them to go into any of these two lanes here cool so just provides you a bit more flexibility to allow you to control exactly where you want cars to go so for this one I only want to go to here for this one I only want to go to here for this one I only want to go to here all right and so you can see how that works if you go shift s it should clear them all for us nope it won't allow us to do that so if you've done them manually to get rid of one again just click on the beginning one click on the end one and it removes it so let's remove all of those and then you right click to unselect so right click and that unselects that right so the cool thing about the lane selector tool is um, you can also use shift s to um, to do things automatically so let's just take the t that off and go back into it so click once go shift s ah for some reason it doesn't do control s oh okay it's control s not shift s they must have changed the hotkey so you see with control s it tries to give its best guess go control s again and it'll cycle through different patterns that you can choose from and then you can just choose the default one and then you can modify it as appropriate however you want it to do so maybe you want one to go from there to there and you can allow for that as well control s and it will take them away so that gives you a little bit more flexibility as compared to the lane arrow so it's up to you um, how you want to use it but the one of the real good purposes of the lane connector tool is when you're doing off ramps and on ramp uh, off ramps and connections um, into your highways so let's have a look at this highway here so you can see that blue truck came in and then went into this lane here and if we have any traffic coming down this way if this lane also allows to go into the leftmost lane here then as this car comes into here and this truck comes into here they're going to clash and one of the cars will need to slow down which is a problem so what we can do is say from here you can only go into this lane if you're in this lane you can only go here and if you're in this lane you can only go here so that way it forces them to stick to their lanes through the junction and then after the junction they can change their lane and the place where they change their lane is these these little circles are called nodes and that's where cars are allowed to change their lane and select a new lane okay so they can carry on into that so sometimes it's a good idea just to um, force the traffic to stay in their lane a little bit further from that junction so just go uh, control s and you can see that it still forces each car to stay in its lane until they get to the next one and then they can change after that so it just gives traffic a bit more of a flow on effect just to spread it out a bit more before they start changing lanes so that's really cool so for this one here we don't really need any lane connectors because the left will turn left this one will go straight on this one will go straight on so it's not such a problem but we can see that over here we have another merge merging area so we want to do um, another lane connector here so connect that into there if you go shift control s it should do it automatically for you right click and then it unselects that particular junction then we can find another one so here we go over here control s right click this one control s right click and uh, that fixes all of that up for us sweet all right so those are all the different tools in traffic manager present edition and if you use those from the beginning of your game then it will cause you much less problems later on whoa just had a massive um, problem in my city while we've been doing this recording 
all of my um, landfill area has been filled up and there's no trash trucks and you can see the trash build up has occurred and if you get too much trash people will start to abandon their buildings so we definitely need a new uh, landfill site so let's create one we don't have an incinerator yet when we get those that will make things a little bit easier let's put it right here oh it's right next to the highway yeah. don't really want that if I put it here it's going to produce some pollution oh dear um, oh can, can I fit it in there no bugger um, if I put it here it's going to produce pollution which will infect my farms which is not good all right let's just pull a road out you can't move landfills once they become full so that's the only problem okay so let's pull a road out from here that it's well away is that not it's because my anarchy let's put it out there for now we're going to get rid of it later on anyway slope too steep ah oh, that's annoying ah oh, okay uh, anyway I will fix this off camera <laughs> and uh, that'll be fixed for the next um episode all right so that's how we use traffic manager present edition hopefully i've explained things so that you can understand how all that works um, in uh, a reasonable amount of detail for you so i really hope that really helps you learn how to use the traffic manager present edition mod all right so that's it from Rygar. i will catch you next time in the next episode oh if you like this um, video please give it um, a thumbs up and uh, if you like my content then please give me a subscription it just helps other people to find um, these videos and it might help them out as well that will be very much appreciated and if you have any comments feel free to um, write them and I'll respond to as many comments as I can alright that's it for this video I will catch you in the next one bye